Good afternoon, it's Saturday, March 10th of 2018. This is Holly River in Webster County, from which the nearby Holly River State Park is named. And this is where Left Fork Holly River, which is literally on my left, and Laurel Fort joined together and Holly River continues downstream to meet Elk River and later Kenora River at Charleston. And with this being my first visit to Holly River State Park, I'm not familiar with it in that much detail, but enough to get by. And this is the second largest uh, state park in West Virginia based on acreage having over 8,000 acres, which is more than double Pipestem, which has more than 4,000 acres, is more rustic, but it's developed as Pipestem. And the topic for this video, applying the Bible, starting off in James chapter one and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So as we seek to apply what we read and study from the Bible, God would have us to apply what we learn according to his word as we pursue a daily walk with him. And this is the most centralized area as far as the development of Holly River State Park. And it's nice to have the sun coming out. And just taking a really quick look at the park map. We came in from the southwest corner. We're right here in the middle of the western section of the park. And pretty much the rest of the park is remote and picking up with James chapter 4 ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us Lusteth the envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. 
Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And this is Laurel Fork. Taking a look at Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. And as we read and study the Bible, some people interpret different verses in different ways. But rather than arguing about minor differences of opinion, we're each to pray and seek God's will for our lives and how He would have us to apply the words of the Scripture to our lives. As we take a look at Titus chapter 3, Starting in verse 1, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness and all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. And taking a look at Colossians 3, starting in verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of, on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. 
when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concoctions, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So obviously as we know that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, we've all messed up and made mistakes. That as we put off the ways of the old man, the old fleshly ways of our human human nature we surrender that to Jesus Christ and we seek to follow after the things of the Spirit the Holy Spirit is also there to comfort and guide us and to teach us what we need to know picking up with verse 12 put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So obviously, the main application of this is to always be thankful, not to just be asking for prayer requests and though our blessings are countless because there have been so many God wants to know that we really appreciate the things he does for us the things he provides us with and that we're not taking him for granted it's very pleasing to God when we give thanks Especially remembering the biggest gift of all was his son who gave us the gift of salvation for those who are willing to repent and to believe upon him. Choosing to pick up their cross and follow him daily. Taking a look at Second Peter 1, starting in verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According 
as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Crossing Laurel Fork as we continue to give thanks. As we know, there are so many in this world that don't even, that don't have it as well as we do, even though we go through tough times. It's always a humbling experience to see those who are struggling. Although it's so easy for us to think about our own situations a lot and we all struggle with some degree of selfish temptation. But we're to remember to put God first and we're to seek to be helpful to others. Picking up again in verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Looking into Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the things of the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And this actually looks like a good place to do outdoor worship services. I wonder if that's what this is for. As this would be a nice peaceful place to read the Bible and pray and even to sing songs and old hymns. And continuing on as we look at Romans 13. 
in verses 12 through 14. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And looking into Ephesians chapter 5. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. By the way, the name of this creek is Dry Run. Although, as you can see, it's definitely not dry today. And that's probably just a name anyway. Continuing with verse 2. And walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God, for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret on a little horse trail. Take the bridge back across though. And now on the way back to the car to show a little more of the park before wrapping up the video. As we continue in 1 John chapter 1. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ, and these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, 
and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the truth is not in us. Looking at 2 Timothy 2, in verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the road dead ends here at nature's rock garden. This looks like it would be an interesting walk for some time when the leaves are on the trees as well. And this seems like a good point to wrap up this video about applying the Bible. And remember that spring forward for most of the U.S. for tomorrow morning. Although it's still officially winter for just a few more days until March the 20th.